time zones in different parts of the world where we're connecting today. My role as facilitator is to ensure that the dialogue goes a little deeper than it might do if you were just left alone to have a conversation with one another. Some key skills that you need to do, and if you've done Generation Global video conferences with us before, you know this, uh, but it might be new to you um, young people there at Mayfield School. Just a reminder to be listening very carefully to what is said by both your peers in the same room as you, because it'd be nice to respond to what you hear from them, and also your peers across the dialogue, so across the airways, if you like, in this video conference. And when I say listening deeply, it's really important that you listen with your entire body, really. Make eye contact by looking into the camera, although I can see actually I think your screen is different to where your, your camera is. So when you are speaking uh, to your partners, don't be looking at the screen. Do be looking into the camera, please. Uh, that's that perfect. You know where the camera is. That's excellent. So just kind of be looking at the screen part of the time uh, and looking into the camera at other parts of the time. That'd be great. Uh, but the best way to show that you're listening is actually by the comments and the questions that you ask. Um, so do listen so that you're able to formulate these follow-up questions and follow-up comments. We're here to explore how you young people feel about the issues of women's and girls' rights, um, but also we're here to hear you as individuals, um, not as a part of any sort of collective group. So when it comes to the agenda, um, you will be sharing together the opportunities and the barriers for women in your localities. I hope you've done some research into that. Um, in your communities, and of course your communities does not just necessarily need to be local. It could be a faith group community. It could be an online community or any other group you feel you belong to. And also what are the barriers and the opportunities nationally in your experience and opinion? In the second part of the dialogue, we'll have a look together at the rights of girls and women with regard to education and safety, political and social and economic activity. Um, and looking at, you know, does this translate well into real life? Does what the government promises for women and girls translate into something that is real? And then towards the end, if we've time, uh, looking at more uh, personal experiences, sharing and inquiring together your own experiences of any sorts of opportunities that you've had, any encouragement or discrimination barriers or things like that. When you are speaking, please start with your name. We'll try to use one another's name in the dialogue. And when you've finished, end with thank you. Not only is it polite, more importantly, it knows that we know then that you've finished your piece and we can move on. There's a lot there. You'll probably forget some of it. Don't worry. Your teachers are there to remind you, remind one another, um, and I will remind you as well if you forget. So we're going to get this show on the road right away. We're going to start over with Universal School students, and it would be just fantastic if we could hear from maybe three or four of you uh, really just talking and explaining about the opportunities and barriers for women as you see it in your localities communities and nationally in India. Thank you. Hello, my name is Siddhi. Can you hear me? All right. So the first thing I could start with is that India is a country of various ethnicities. It is sort of impossible to sum them up in, a, in one sentence. But basically, what you can say about the faiths is that many of the religious texts that we follow, for example, Manusmriti or the Upanishads, they all mention that men and women are born equal, but the woman's role is to obey the man. Uh, hello, my name is Ananya. Uh, can you hear me? 
Uh, so, uh, like my friend Sidhya mentioned that our country is extremely diverse, filled with a lot of religion. Each religion has a different belief, but together as a community, uh, uh, in the modern world, we should believe that women should be empowered. And for that, many organizations in our country have been working towards helping women join as well as rejoin the workforce. Because after a woman takes a pregnancy break or a break to look after someone elder in the family, it becomes very difficult to, uh, to get back to her job. And so that is why uh, several organizations, uh, I'll name some such as Jobs for Her or uh, She is the King, uh, such organizations help uh, working women in our country rejoin the workforce. So that is one of the opportunities for women in our country. One of the main barriers in our country for women is that the primary belief or the duty of a woman is to set up a family and marry. Even if a woman is permitted to work, education is not her priority. She is supposed to marry and have a child and look after the housework and do the cooking and the cleaning and all everything. The all the household chores, exactly. And one of the another major points is that women are not allowed to marry a person of their choice. A woman's marriage is usually dictated by the males of a family and they choose a person who is financially stable, uh, one who is economically very gifted or well endowed and uh, due to cultures as well that intercaste marriages look down upon so basically women are not allowed to marry by choice and that is an effective barrier. So women, yeah. Thank you. Uh, so, yeah, uh, you were saying something, ma'am? No, I want you to go ahead. Yeah. So another barrier for women, uh, as in my personal experience, would be equal pay in their jobs and equal working hours. Uh, I remember uh, when I was put in a crash and my mom and dad both used to work, they both had the same qualification. However, my dad used to leave at rest 9 in the morning, all cool, and come back at 6. However, my mom used to wake up at 5 in the morning, rush, make everyone stiffens, make food. She had to reach the office by 7 and she used to work till 8.30. So you could see the contrast in the working hours. So that's really an important barrier for women in our country. Um, my name is Ayush. Um, the opportunities are uh, legal provisions for education for women. Uh, many organizations in, uh, uh, in our country, they provide free education for women as they think that uh, they should be given equal importance as to given by men. I completely agree with what Ayush said. And I am Vidhi. Regarding the barriers, though we get free education, in India, one two-third of the illiterate adults are women. Thank you so much. Can I just stop you there for one second because the students at Mayfield have heard quite a lot which was just wonderful. You did such a great job of explanations there and covered a variety of issues. But I want to go over to Mayfield students just to see whether any of you would like to maybe ask a question. There's something you don't quite understand. Is there something you've heard that perhaps is generalization? You want to just check that it's, it's true in all circumstances. Um, so I'm going to give a moment to see whether you've got any questions before you explain the situation as you see it for women in the UK. Did you understand everything that was said to you then? Um, from the students there in India. Okay, 
I want to ask something first then, because we've got to be really alert and aware of generalizations that can be made in dialogue, because what we can do then is we can actually get into that business of creating stereotypes when that's exactly the thing we want to undo. So I was really curious to hear, and I can't remember your name who said it, so forgive me for that, but somebody said um, that women cannot marry their own choice. And I was just wondering whether everybody in the class there in India felt that that definitely is the case, that it is prevalent throughout the entire country. So what are your opinions about this kind of free choice in marriage for a woman? And what about for the man? Is the free choice for the man, but not for the woman? Thank you. Yeah, uh, I would I would like to add a point that uh, my name is Ayush and uh, yeah, men are given more importance and uh, they are given a choice as compared to women. Uh, women have to uh, marry a man, a man who is financially stronger and not a man who is not uh, who is not financially stronger. So men can choose a woman of their choice, no matter <clears throat> how economically or financially backward they are. And yes, uh, though sometimes men are also forced or not given the choice to marry the women they want, they are often in the positions of power to choose. So if a man does not want to marry this particular girl, he can tell that to his parents and rebel. But while women, no, that's not the case. They need to listen to their parents' choice. They need to be obeyed. Uh, hello, my name is Ananya again, and I totally agree with Siddhi's point. And I would like to add up that um, this is mainly uh, dom this system is mainly dominant in the villages in India, and 73% of uh, our country is filled with villages, rural areas. And in such villages, what basically happens is uh, the there are there are uh, people like. The f people are farmers, that's their main occupation. So they spread around that their daughter has come into the age of getting married. And child marriage is also a great problem in villages. So once a girl turns 14 or 15, uh, the farmers would just go around saying, oh, my girl has turned 15, now I need to find a bride for her. And boys, they would look at the photos they would look at the uh, photos of the bride or uh, and if they like the girl then they'll just come around have a meeting and if the boy seems to like the bride that's it the marriage is set the girl is not given the choice of deciding whether she uh, likes the the groom or not because uh... bear with us we're having a technical glitch one second what a pity, she was in full flow, that young lady. <laughs> okay, yeah. It might be useful right now if you just, whilst you're muted on your microphone, you can have a talk together, um, you know, with your your peers in your classroom about what you've heard, what you found interesting, has anything been challenging for you, and what might you be saying about the rights and barriers and opportunities for girls and women in your community. Okay. Yay, welcome, Yay, back. welcome back. Okay, okay. Can, you can you continue where continue we left where off? We left. You just finished talking about child marriage. Thank you.
That was all from our side. Thank you. Perfect. Thank you. Right, we're going to go over to Mayfield. Uh, Mayfield, could one of your teachers or one of the adults in the room just put one row of lights on and let's see if we can see you a little better. It's still quite dark for us. Video conferencing likes artificial light over natural light. In the meantime, let's not waste any of this precious dialogue time and let's hear from some of you girls about the barriers, opportunities for women and girls in your community. Thank you. Yeah, go for it. Or talk about your own. Um, hi, my name is Khadija um, and I just wanted to reassure you guys that many of the issues that you were discussing about gender and about um, social as well as economic um, inequality for women, it's very much prominent here and it might not be so apparent all the time, however, behind closed doors, um, those issues are still very prominent in our own society and it's not just um, in your country, it's all over the world. So I just want to make sure that it's not just in your country, it's in ours too. I had a question. Um, you know, if one of the girls that are forced to marry someone they don't want, what would happen to them and what would come upon them in their community about their families? Did you hear that question hear that at question Universal? At Universal? Yes, yes. yes. Oh, go ahead with your answers. And I say, and I say it deliberately because it would be really interesting if we could have more than one of you answer because there might be different perspectives. Thank you. Hello, my name is Thruv and I would like that uh, if women don't want to marry a uh, man that they, uh, they don't like, they would consult their father or their mother that they don't like, but eventually they are forced to marry him. If in some cases the uh, girl tries to convince the father, but then uh, he's not convinced, so they run away from their home. That's Thank you. So to the young lady the young sat lady next, to, sat the next to the young man who just, spoke, who just spoke, do you agree? Is that what you understand happens? My name is Hia and I do agree with what he said. Okay, great. Okay, so great. thank you for so your question you there. And thank you for the answers. Um, can we go back to our UK classroom there just to hear some thoughts and reflections on what the opportunities and barriers are for women in the UK? Thank you. Just say your name. So, the opportunities available to women in this country, whichever you have to like, you can do what boxes. Sorry, I do a lot of Um, Hi, my name's Naveen, and we're looking at the gates and barriers to certain situations in the UK. So, there's a lot of opportunities right now because um, loads of women are able to study and because it's free and um, it's more equal now. and, and we're also given the opportunity to go to university as well, so we're quite lucky in that sense. Um, and more women, women are becoming more career based, so they're not just thinking about getting married straight away, they're thinking about their futures and how they can earn a living independently as well. However, there are still a few barriers, for instance, um, obviously, there's still the gender pay gap, 
um, which can deter some women from working because they don't feel like it's worth it. Um, in addition, like women, some women are still expected to um, carry out domestic work as, as well as labour, so they're still expected to do the household chores after they come back from work, so that's still a barrier that we experience in the UK. Thank you. Um, hi, my name is Maha. Um, another opportunity. No, don't carry on. Oh, what a pain. <laughs> we seem to have dropped them again. So just hold that thought for a moment. But well done, Naveen. You did a really good job there of explaining opportunities and barriers. I hope they'll have some questions for you about that in a moment. And again, just use this time to think about what you might want to ask or what you might want to add from what somebody else has said. And make it your own personal target, every single one of you there, to say at least one thing in this dialogue today. Okay, Maha, do you want to pick up where you left off there? Thanks. Hi, my name is Maha. Um, another opportunity that women have in the UK is that more women are involved in the political side. And so we have like the Prime Minister and we also have women who have jobs like, like being the head of the police department and like head teachers in school. However, compared to men, there are still a small amount of women involved in politics. And yeah, thank you. Does anyone else want to ask you anything? In terms of opportunities, like you personally, just come to work. Opportunities that you have as a young person, being a woman, or any barriers, maybe? Um, go the mic. Um, hi, my name is Khadija again, and I just wanted to ask a question to the girls specifically. Um, the, as you guys were saying, although um, your economy has become more industrialised and there are opportunities for more work that isn't necessarily always um, manual labour work that was typically associated with males. Um, now, do you feel as though with these changes um, in opportunities that as girls you can pursue careers in stereotypically masculine subjects such as um, science and engineering, or do you still feel like there are social um, barriers within your culture and like that stops you from pursuing them? Thank you. Ask them to speak clearly or so no the microphone problem I can answer. Could you could you not hear the question? Do you want me to repeat it? Okay. It was a fantastic question. And can you hear me okay? Yes, okay. So the question is around the changing kind of economic situation there in India with more industrialization and technological advances. Um, Naveen is, is keen to know whether there are increased opportunities for women to enter into those sorts of industries away from what you might consider more traditional female employment. Thank you. Did I do justice to your question there? Oh, good. I think our friends in India are having what we call bandwidth hits, which means they've got fluctuating bandwidth at their school, and that's accounting for sometimes they drop and sometimes it freezes. Oh, they've dropped again. What a shame. Sorry about this.
girls, be aware that sometimes facilitators will ask you to answer your own questions. Um, and it's a good, strong question. So we might bounce that back to you and ask you to comment on the situation for girls regarding kind of STEM subjects and others in the UK. And it'd be wonderful if we could hear from some of the other girls, um, as well as those just sat at the front there. Thank you. Okay, Universal, do you want to go ahead and answer? Thank you. Um, so yes, uh, because of the technological and the economical developments, slowly but surely change is still being seen. But the problem is that the development is only mainly reaching the cities and the modern uh, urban developed countries or areas. So the states or the areas which are not yet developed are still in the same condition. Child marriage, widow remarriage being a taboo, all of that still exists in the rural areas. The development is only being seen in the urban areas. So maybe that's what a point is. Thank you. Hi, I'm Ananya again, and I would like to add on to what Siddhi said here. So uh, definitely, yes, because of the development economically and politically due to in industrialization, women have been uh, closing the gender gap along with men when, it's com when it comes to I'm just asking our technician if anything can be done about them uh, and their bandwidth issue, because if we could just spend a couple of moments getting a more stable connection, that would work better for the dialogue. Again, apologies, but this is something we do experience, um, especially when we are working with countries like India and Pakistan and elsewhere where the technology is perhaps not as um, developed and embedded as it is here in the UK. I think they heard me, so should I go? Yes, please. Go ahead. Uh, my name is Ayush, and uh, I would like to ask a question uh, to the school. As mentioned earlier, that uh, women are given chance to enter politics, however, the number is less. So what initiatives can be taken uh, by the government to increase the number of women? Thank you. Yeah, I think they can, yeah. Um, can you hear me? Yeah. Um, I was going to say, for instance, in our, uh, so our first exam, formal exam in nation is our GCC exams, and um, within that, we are allowed to study subjects which stimulate political thought, like we can study um, RV and we can study sociology and etc. And it does open, um, expand our intellect, and we can 
explore uh, widely perspectives and then come onto a level um for instance my friends a lot of them they take government politics and the teachers especially because we have a variety of female teachers who teach the subject it shows that politics isn't reserved to just men and exploring politics is open for everyone regardless of gender and i feel like seeing a variety of politicians and mps and etc and the media constantly and um, the media constantly reporting on females in politics it really does um lift the spirits of any young girls who want to maybe go into the field however in regard to your culture um in the south asian community i was reading that there are still barriers and that females who go into politics even in our country are seen as um disregarding their culture and as if it's a betrayal almost but yeah there are um initiatives in place that do motivate women to partake in politics thank you Please do go ahead with asking questions of one another or building upon what you've heard already in the discussion. Thank you. Hmm. Yeah, that's fine. Just be close to the microphone though, okay, as well. And my name is Moha and we spoke about child marriage in India and I was wondering if there are any laws to protect children against child marriage. Thank you. Go ahead at Universal. Uh, hello, my name is Ananya. Uh, can can everybody hear me? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Uh, so, uh, so uh, please excuse me for interrupting for a moment, but uh, we cannot hear the students of the Mayfield School clearly. There are a lot of uh, interruptions. I'll repeat for you because I've got my earphones in, which really helps with the audio. But obviously, you can't do that when there's so many of you in the room. Um, so that was—it's a really interesting question from uh, Maha, who's who refers back to your earlier discussion around child marriage, and she'd like to know whether there's any laws in place that protect girls against child marriage. Thank you, that you know of. Yes, yes, of course. Uh, uh, child marriage is, in fact, completely legal in our country. There are provisions taken by the government to prevent uh, child marriage. Uh, the main act is called as the Prevention of Child Marriage Act. Uh, and uh, this this clearly states that uh, if, if any government officer or if any undercover person finds that child marriage is being, uh, you know, performed, then the parents of the girl will immediately be put to jail. However, there is not a lot of uh, police inspection in villages and people don't care a lot. So that is a drawback acting to it. But yes, the government has ensured to put a law prohibiting the act of child marriage. It is completely illegal and it is only dominant in the rural areas as stated before. Thank you. Uh, hello, my name is Ayush and I would like to ask a question that uh, uh, what sure measure, measures have your government taken to ensure women empowerment? Uh, if yes, does the law translate well in, the li uh, in real life? So do people follow it if the law is being made? That's a really challenging question. Um, and of course, we don't expect our young people to be, you know, legal experts when it comes to um, employ things like employment and women's rights. So perhaps what you want to do there at Mayfield is just take a minute to perhaps 
talk amongst yourselves and perhaps with your teacher and together formulate uh, a response to this particular question. It's a great question, um, but I think it might involve a little bit of thinking before we get an answer. Thank you. Perhaps you can be thinking there in the class in India as well, whether uh, that applies to you also. I mean, you gave a great example of child marriage there where law doesn't always translate into what happens in real life. Can you think of other examples where that happens? Thank you. Yeah, so, I mean, obviously we do have laws in terms of... Can you mute there at Mayfield, please, whilst you're having your internal discussion? Thank you. Okay, so Mayfield students, uh, what are your individual personal thoughts and perspectives on this issue? Again, do not expect you to be an expert. Um, just how do you see uh, this particular issue? Thank you. Are you ready, Mayfield? I think you're still muted. Sorry, my dear. Um, just press that unmute button. Nope. Is that okay? Try again. Hi, my name is Simonte, and we have a thing uh, in the UK um, called the Wow Festival, which inspires women to do more in like the UK, like for example, jobs the different views on the women's rights and stuff. And how did you feel like? Oh, when we went there um, as a school, um, I found it very inspiring to know like different stories of people that have told us what happened in their lives and how they changed it and the different opportunities they had in their do you, do you have festivals like that in India where um, women are I wanted to ask as well, do you have festivals like that in the in your country, let's just for, for a moment let's chat today on this one topic. And Demonte, it was great to hear from you. But I, could we hear from at least one other student in the class there at Mayfield on this issue of whether um, the laws that protect and encourage women translate into real life? And then we'll go and hear a couple of responses from India. And then we'll come back to your question. I'm not abandoning your question. We'll come back to it in a moment. Thank you. Um, to answer your question, we have laws in place that prohibit discrimination and, you know, exclusion of women in society, like we have um, a 2010 Equality Act and it banned any discrimination upon, you know, race, ethnicity and gender, sexuality, disability, etc. Um, and therefore, women can't explicitly be rejected a job because they're seen as incapable, they're seen as emotionally unstable, which were common stereotypes 
that um, prevented women from getting long-term well-paid jobs. However, there's still um, implicit processes that happen in the workplace that restrict women and do form what we call the glass ceiling. And it's things like women um, having to do majority of domestic duties and childcare, and then obviously um, the, the male counter their male um, counterpart can take part in extracurricular things like going out to dinner with their colleagues and through them um, they all obviously recommend each other and people men get to elevate their careers but women don't have what you call this social network or the social capital and they're kind of again restricted by the glass ceiling because of all these patriarchal duties that men are quite reluctant to share with them but that is a stereotype and things are changing however it's still very much thank you Really fascinating, thank you. Over to Universal. Uh, uh, hello again, but I'm really sorry, we just couldn't hear the answer. Could we please request the student uh, to speak into the mic? Or repeat the answer for us once? It was really unclear and uh, it was not loud enough. Thank you. Okay. Um, just say, can you hear me? Can you hear me? Can you hear me? Because <laughs> they've muted. If you can hear, just if you can hear, do a thumbs up. And if you can't hear, do a thumbs down. Right. Okay, they can hear. Um, but you know that distance you've got there near to the mic? That's just perfect. And if you can speak just a little louder than you normally would do, that would be great. I don't want them to miss any of this because what you said was really fascinating. Thank you. Um, I was going to say that we do have laws legally that are put into place. Um, for instance, an Equality Act, and it bans discrimination upon gender and ethnicity and other social um, factors and traits of people. And as a result, um, you can't not offer a woman a job because you have that um, old school stereotype, let's say, about women being emotionally unstable or being distracted with childcare and domestic um, interests. And therefore, women can not be refused a job. And they do have judicial access let's say to a well-paid job however um there are still implicit processes that restrict women and i'm sure you're familiar with the concept of um, a glass ceiling and it's things like women having to tackle majority of um, the child care and the housework and you know school errands for their children that restrict them in processing and things like going out to dinner with their colleagues which men don't have those responsibilities so therefore they can do them and through that men recommend each other and you know they elevate their peers and people who they constantly interact with from their organization but outside of work and as a result women are deprived of this and they kind of stay it might be um, a completely well-paid job however they don't elevate as quickly as men because they don't have this um, social capital to rely back on like men do and that just shows that although there are legal um opportunities for women to excel it doesn't always get put into practice and maybe that's a stereotype and things are changing which they are but however it's still prominent thank you Thank you so much. And I'm really pleased that at the end there you said, and maybe this is a stereotype, because what you're actually saying is this is the way that I see this political this particular issue. This is the way that I understand it. And it's really important in dialogue that we are mindful of the fact that that's what we're hearing. We're hearing a lot of opinions and a lot of experiences, but it's not necessarily a universal truth or even a national truth that we're exploring here. Um, Okay, Universal, did you catch that or do you need me just to repeat part of it? Uh, thank you. Uh, we could clearly hear them. 
Right, so I've got a question for your teachers. We've had a couple of technical issues and we did have a late start. We've not yet really explored the personal experiences, um, opportunities and barriers. And it'd be wonderful if we could do that, but I'm asking whether we can spend another 10 minutes together or have you got other lessons and commitments that you have to rush off to and therefore we have to end. Uh, um, good morning uh, again, it's an Anand Ananya here. And uh, no, we do not have any commitments. Actually, our school is over and we're free for another hour. All right, <laughs> wonderful. Um, how about over there at Mayfield? Are we okay to continue? I can't hear. We have 10 minutes into our next lesson. Oh, well, perfect. That's great. Let's continue for 10 minutes. But now, can we move? What we've done is a really great job of sharing and exploring together uh, the issues of women's rights and girls' rights on a kind of abstract, very political, very social and economic level. But what about your own experiences? So boys here as well as girls, you know, what have you experienced as, uh, what have you seen with regard to your parents, your grandparents, your teachers? What do you see in the media and the news? And, and how do you feel about opportunities and barriers for yourself in the future and currently, but also for sisters and cousins and, and others, if you are not female yourself? So anybody can start from any school, and I'd love it if you could seek out similarities, seek out differences and comment on those, and do ask questions if you hear anything really interesting and you want to learn more about. Thank you. Okay, so one of the experiences I would like to share is one of my cousins who has studied law and is highly qualified applied for a job at a very reputed firm. She was well qualified and perfectly applicable for the job. And the, another person in the interview was a male who was not uh, that qualified and was in fact looking for only an internship. But even though she was a fully um, able person for the job, she was rejected just on the basis that she was a woman. It is perceived, uh, in, this was an incident in Gujarat, so it is perceived that after a woman joins, she was she's young, she's about 25 years old. So maybe in a few years she will take a break for her marriage. After that she will have to take a maternity leave. So these are seen as disadvantages in her life and the person, the firm is just like, okay, so she'll have to take these many breaks, she won't be an efficient uh, or able hand, an efficient worker. So that is why she was rejected and another less qualified male was taken instead of a fully qualified woman. How did that, that make you feel when you heard this story about your cousin? I felt very angry because, and she felt very angry. She was actually telling it to me and sobbing actually because it was what it was a dream to work at that firm and just being denied not because of a qualification issue or a legal issue or anything valid or any other valid reason but just on the basis that she was a woman and he was a man so it made me feel very angry and not something not justified had happened <laughs> Uh, hello, one of the, um, well, I would like to share a personal experience, uh, but before that, I would just like to state the base of this experience, which is that um, uh, in, in India, majority of the people are Hindus. So we are follow, followers of Hinduism, and so am I. And in our culture, in our tradition, we believe that when a woman is menstruating, she is forbidden to visit the god or to pray to the God. And the personal experience is that even when um, I, I just go to the God to pray or just to sit and my mom came to me and she was like, what are you doing? And I'm like, I'm just sitting and praying. She's like, you know that in these, in this stage, you cannot do it. It's forbidden. But I see no point to it because I personally believe that there is one God and we all look up to him. And no God has ever stated that 
when a woman is menstruating, she is impure or she is not able or she is not fit to pray or she is not fit to be in front of the God. So that is one of the main drawbacks in our country. And that is what really, uh, you know, made me angry when my own mother uh, became a believer of this. So we girls at such a young age, uh, these habits are getting instilled in us. So even as uh, people, even as girls, the modern world, my mom, she is, she's qualified and stuff, but she still is superstitious. She still believes this. And that is a huge drawback. Thousands of women and girls across the country still believe that we are impure when we are menstruating and therefore we should not go close to God. So that I think is a real drawback. Thank you so much. Brilliantly well explained. Thank you for sharing very personal stories there. Can we, I'm really pleased there's some boys moving up to the mic, but I want to just go back over to Mayfield School um, to hear whether, you know, there's any similar or different experiences there, or if they want to comment on what they've heard or share something new. Thank you. Yeah, um, I think that's fine. I think that's really good. Um, my name's Homaira. Just check that they can hear you. Can you guys hear me? Can you guys hear Yes, you, you're going to have to do that. Move a little closer to the mic, please. Um, my name's Omara, and um, so I can sympathize with. I can sympathize with like the fact that you guys think like when you're menstruating, you might feel like you guys are the only ones, but like. As, mus as a Muslim, um, we kind of go through the same thing because, like, when we're menstruating, we don't actually pray or anything. And it's like, like, obviously, it's a natural thing and you can't stop it. But, like, um, it might make it seem like um, that you're, like, impure, but you're not because it's natural and you can't stop it. But it's, like, the same with other religions like ours. So like, I can sympathize with the fact that you might feel that way because obviously as a Muslim, I feel that way sometimes too. But like, you can't really stop it. And like, it's not like... Kamara, let me just, can I just summarize for the class in, in Universal because I can understand why that might be difficult to hear. So Hamara said that she sympathized with the last girl who spoke about being a Hindu and not being able to pray when she's menstruating. Um, and she said that she sympathizes because as a Muslim uh, girl, she goes through the same thing and other Muslims can go through the same thing. And she makes the point that this is natural and it cannot be stopped. Um, I'm just wondering, Hamara, can you tell us um, if, and this is a challenging question, but how does it make you feel when, you know, you're, you're told that this is a time when you're impure and you know it's it's a time when perhaps you can't commune with your god in the same way or if how you'd want to be able to do that thank you like it makes me feel like i don't know like it is like it's forbidden you not know, in my religion but like at the same time like i might feel like that um um what to say? Um, yeah, I would like it to be different because, like, at the end of the day, there is religious. There's more people who are more religious than me who'd like to pray. All the, like, you know, in like Ramadan, for example, we might have to like we're not allowed to um, fast Bible on our period while we're menstruating, which is a problem because then after we have to keep them fast again, which might make us feel that like I don't know. It might make you feel low because, like, at the end of the day, like. As a male, you can keep all of them. And yeah. Thank you for sharing that, both of you. Anybody else from the school uh, in the UK from Mayfield want to share something about a personal experience? Yeah. Like being a woman, being restricted or anything like that. The obstacles or I can see your teachers giving you advice but also the converse of that you know any wonderful opportunities that you've got any windows and doors that you feel are open and opportunities 
great. Summer, just think. So you're ready then, okay? Yeah. Um, hi, just my check name is can, Marcy. You. can you hear me? Hi, my name is Marcy. Anyone? Okay. Um, recently, even though we're talking about women in employment and stuff like that, we usually have to get work experience that helps us more into getting the jobs and stuff like that. So um, recently, uh, we was doing a work experience construction project where we was painting and building, no, sorry, painting and decorating Mayfield, and the um, the people who were mainly uh, our mentors. There was one woman, and there was four or five other men, and we were there was about three or four of us that were put into different areas, or there was bigger groups and there was smaller groups, but mostly. Um, the mentors ourselves, even though we were shown to be capable of being able to paint and stuff like that, we were mostly undermined and we wasn't strong enough to move things or stuff like that. And they would undermine you automatically before even letting you have the chance. And they would come in and make like little remarks like, oh, you're not going to get this done. And this was only very recently. And it was just sort of very undermining, even though we're still in the modern world. So I found that quite disappointing. So there's still sort of that gender gap in different roles and stuff like that still going ongoing even in schools thank you so much marcy so she shared an experience of her work experience um which is to build up skills for the future and they were doing some work um painting and decorating it it sounds like the students each had mentors and marcy's point was that she felt that the mentors would undermine, not give them opportunities, not give them a chance uh, to show that they could do something. And she felt that this attitude from the mentors was um, undermining and it was disappointing. And she makes the point that this is very recent as well. Okay, boys, let's hear from you. Thank you. Uh, hello, uh, I am Ayush once again and uh, I would like to share a personal experience wherein uh, my friend's uh, relative, uh, she was around 16 or 17 years old and uh, she was very good at studies. So uh, she used to live in a parochial state uh, wherein uh, girls are not given more importance. So uh, she, wo uh, she, she asked her parents that uh, she wants to go abroad for further studies and uh, the the parents said that after she comes back they won't have money to uh, to spend uh, money to spend on her marriage so she was not allowed to go abroad and uh, she she had to marry a man who was not as qualified or as intelligent as she was so ayush can you tell me how how does it make you feel as a young man when you hear stories like this you know that money that could be used for education is instead used for marriage um i i, I feel really uh, i i don't have no words to express yeah it is unfelt uh how <laughs> so it is unfair for women uh and uh, they should be given given equal importance uh, no matter they stay in villages or in metropolitan cities uh it is all upon our beliefs and uh, it is all upon our beliefs and uh, what people think uh, so i believe that you sh the person should not think that what the villagers will think uh, he should have just sent his daughter to abroad for abroad for further studies she could make a career Do you know i could stay here for hours just listening and talking and 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 helping you young people to explore this fascinating issue. It's been really, really interesting hearing you share with one another um, the barriers and the opportunities for women and girls in your community and in your nations, um, and also your, some of your personal experiences. But we do need to wind up now. Um, but one thing we do before we finish all of our dialogues is we ask you young people to just reflect on what you have learned. Um, I'm hoping that you've enjoyed the experience. Let's take that as an assumption, so you don't need to comment on that.
But instead, can you can you start your reflection with something with words like, I was surprised to hear, or um, I found it fascinating um, when I heard, um, or something I'd like to know more about. Okay, so see if you can start your reflection with one of those sentence starters. And I'm going to give you just 30 seconds to think. And then we're going to aim for three responses. So that's three different students from each class. 30 minutes, 30 minutes, 30 seconds thinking time. Thank you. Not yet universal, just a couple more moments, please. This is okay. Vama. I am very surprised that women are still undermined about their skills. And I was fascinated to hear that even Muslims undergo the same problem as we do during our menstruation. And um, I believe that uh, women, uh, women have to change and there will be change uh, in the future. Thank you. Uh, I'm Shreya. And as my friend Vama already told you about the menstruation thing, uh, well, I was, I was I found it really fascinating about uh, women being a part of the uh, inquiry, not being a part of the politics. I was really surprised about it. Thank now, you. has has this young person heard correctly? Did you make the point earlier that women are not involved in politics, or is there something you need to just rectify there at Mayfield? Yeah. Yeah. I apologize. I apologize about my. Okay. At Mayfield, yeah. is it actually the situation that in the UK women have a lot of barriers politically? You said I think Maha about we've got female protagonists, but there's still less proportion um, compared to men. My name is Maha and before I said that um, there are a lot of women who are involved in the political side. However, compared to men, there's um, a small amount of women involved in politics. Okay, so there are women in politics in the UK, but proportionally compared to men, uh, they are far fewer. Okay. Um, can we hear one more from Universal and then we'll go over to Mayfield for their reflections. Thank you. Go ahead, Universal. Oh, maybe we'll come back to them. Uh, Mayfield, thank you. Thanks, Moha. I was surprised to hear that um, in India, child marriage is still legal because we live in a modern society and I assume that like it's kind of looked down upon rather than... And the police, they don't really look into it, so it's seen as like not important in India. Thank you. Can I just come in there because I think when we heard about child marriage earlier, the point that was made, Maha, is that it is illegal. Um, in fact, the person who answered that question talked about um, if the parents have found out they will go to prison. But the point she made was that even though it is illegal, it still happens in a lot of the villages. Okay, so just to let you know, it is illegal. I've got that right, have I? That universal child marriage is illegal. Universal school, yeah? Yeah. 
Vini. Uh, hello, my name is Kushi. And, One second, uh, Kushi. So just checking, because Maha um, heard that child marriage was legal in India, but I was just explaining, I think you said it is illegal, but it still goes on despite being illegal. Is that right? Yes. Okay. We're just going to hear from a couple more at Mayfield, and then we'll come back to you. Okay. Uh, hello, my name is Claudia. So I was surprised to hear that um, as a Hindu girl in India, they also go through the same uh, problems as a Muslim girl here in the UK, as I have the same thoughts and feelings as, for example, during Ramadan, as you feel like you're impure and um, you feel like you can't really communicate with your God. That like, um, I feel like... Um, for either religion, I, I feel like um, you shouldn't feel impure about stuff or you should really be able to communicate um, with, your, uh, with your God um, regardless of menstruation or, uh, you know, any any other sort of, you know, other problems that women undergo because that shouldn't change um, the way you should um, communicate with your God. Thank you. Thank you. Right, we're going to have one last point from the student over in Universal. Thank you. Hello, it's Vidhi here. I would like to end it up by making a point that we all need to realize that time will not lessen the gender gap, but our actions will. Thank you. Thank you very much. Well done, everybody. I know how nerve wracking it can be in your first video conference. Um, so to all of you who took part, especially if it was your first time, very well done. You did a great job of explaining your own perceptions and experiences of opportunities and barriers to women's rights really, really well and with examples. And there was strong evidence that you were listening clearly to one another by the comments that you made when you said things like, I just want to add on to, or I agree with what such such a body said. Um, and also the questions that you asked show that you were listening carefully to one another. So really a big pat on the back to all of you who've been involved in this dialogue today. A uh, big thanks to Universal School students who have stayed behind after school so that this could happen today. Now, traditionally, what we do now is we just open up our microphones and we say goodbye to one another. And if you'd like to say goodbye <laughs> in Hindi, that would be lovely. <laughs> okay. Say goodbye, everybody, to one another. Bye. <laughs> I'm <laughs> <laughs>